Good morning, everyone, and good morning, Garth. Good morning, Paul. You moved close to your books today. Yes, I have. <laughs> you backed up. <laughs> it's, yes. We might be able to get to the point where we can work out what your all your titles are. Oh dear. <laughs> have I forgotten to change it again? <laughs> no, 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 no. You see, we've got all your your word biblical commentaries up the top right hand corner. All sorts of exciting stuff. Very distracting. Right. <laughs> Um, this morning, here we are in Passion Tide, as we really do now start thinking about entering fully into the story of Jesus leading up to the crucifixion and his resurrection. Um, and we'll do that in big time tomorrow at, uh, for Palm Sunday. Do you do the whole um, Passion narrative? We do, yes. Yeah. So we're doing that tomorrow. Many churches will do the liturgy of the palms earlier, and then and then um, and then a passion, the passion narrative, going through the whole of the passion story. Um, but as we think of that, um, as we enter into that, we're also thinking today of Dietrich uh, Bonhoeffer, who famously uh, incredible life, uh, incredible theologian, and uh, incredible man um, in all that he did um, in the in the Second World War in relation to uh, standing against what was happening. Um, and so our readings today, we're going to have Psalm 23 and Psalm 127, both quite short. If you want to carry on in the narrative of what's happening uh, with the people of Israel in Egypt, then Exodus 11 is for you. And uh, we're going to be reading from Hebrews 13, 17 to the end. Excellent. Let's just delight in this new day for a moment. Let us, just, if you can look out the window, I, I, I'm seeing lots of blue sky, um, lots of signs of new life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. So, O oh Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Let your ways be known upon earth. Your saving power among the nations. Garth and I will say the song of lamentation is it nothing to you or you who pass by look and see if there, there is any sorrow like my sorrow which was brought upon me which the lord inflicted on the day of his fierce anger for these things i weep my eyes flow with tears for a comforter is far from me one to revive my courage remember my affliction and my bitterness the wormwood and the gall. But this I will call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that we should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord, for the Lord. For the Lord will not reject forever. Though he causes grief, he will have compassion. According to the abundance of his steadfast love, for he does not willingly afflict or grieve anyone. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Brings us to Psalm 23 and then we'll move straight on into Psalm 127. The Lord is my shepherd, therefore can I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He shall refresh my soul and guide me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me. In the presence of those who trouble me, you have anointed my head with oil, and my cup shall be full. Surely goodness and loving mercy shall follow me 
all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Psalm 127 then. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labour in vain. Unless the Lord keeps the city, the God keeps watch in vain. It is in vain that you hasten to rise up early and go so late to rest, eating the bread of toil, for he gives his beloved sleep. Children are a heritage from the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his gift. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. Happy are those who have their quiver full of them. They shall not be put to shame when they dispute with their enemies in the gate. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Amen. And so our reading is taken from Hebrews chapter 13. Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they are keeping watch over your souls and will give an account. Let them do this with joy and not with sighing, for that would be harmful to you. Pray for us. We are sure that we have a clear conscience, desiring to act honorably in all things. I urge you all the more to do this so that I may be restored to you very soon. Now may the God of peace who brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make you complete in everything good so that you may do his will, working among us that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, bear with my word of exhortation, for I have written to you briefly. I want you to know that our brother Timothy has been set free, and if he comes in time, he will be with me when I see you. Greet all your leaders and all the saints. Those from Italy send you greetings. Grace be with you all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross you have redeemed the world. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. We preach Christ crucified, the power of God and the wisdom of God. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. The word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to those who are being saved, it is the power of God. Blessed be the Lord of the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophet, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Amen. The word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to those who are being saved, it is the power of God. 
Amen. We come to our prayers of intercession as we pray for the world. We call to pray for the persecuted church today. We the oppressed peoples of the world, and of course, our prayers remain with those in Ukraine. With that shift of what's happening from from Kiev to Kiev to to the to the southern parts of Ukraine, Lord, we pray for all those there. Mm. Lord, we still cry to you that 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 you. You will stay the hand of those who are bringing down violence on, on that nation. Change the hearts of leaders in Russia. Help us all to know what is the best way to respond and to be able to, to pay the, the price of that. If it's economic or in whatever way that is. Oh Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And Lord, as we think about uh, the life and witness and ministry of Dietrich Bonhoeffer at this time. Mm. Father, in most difficult circumstances and days, he stood up and spoke up. <laughs> and he challenged what was false teaching and what was evil as he spoke, Lord, of, of the goodness of God, and he spoke uh, the things of God in the midst of a people that at that time did not want to hear. We thank you for his, the way in which he wrestled with his faith and with his thinking and leaves behind today, Lord, a legacy of theology that we can, uh, we can take advantage of. He, he was willing, Father, his, his faith in you, his belief in you was so strong that he was willing to lay down his life. And Lord, as Paul has already prayed, I, I just thank you for all those who within Ukraine and Russia today are standing up against the things that are happening, that continue to speak the works of God. That, Lord, they are not afraid to be speaking uh, out and speaking truth into those situations. We pray, Lord, that you would bless them, you would protect them, and that, Lord, you would continue to multiply their ministry. We pray, too, for all those who across the world, Lord, both in, in countries where there's persecution and restriction, but also in countries where there's freedom, mm. for those that stand up and speak up against, uh, against violence, that speak up against uh, oppression, that speak up in, uh, against the things uh, that, that damage and harm the image of God. And we pray, Father, that their voice would not be, um, would not be smothered with the noise of all that's happening around us, but that it would be heard clearly, clearly as they speak. We pray that, Lord, that they might speak those words of godliness and truth and righteousness and justice into a society that could so easily disintegrate into decay. But Lord, may those words and those thoughts that you have placed in them be heard and be a source of bringing life where there's only an opportunity for decay, but to turn it around to bring wholesomeness and to bring life, to bring righteousness and truth, to speak of justice and light. And so, Father, we just pray for them and we commend them to you. Lord, in your mercy. Well, hear our prayer. And would we pray for those nearer to us, nearer home, who are facing all sorts of other challenges, those who are lonely? Perhaps those who, coming out of this last few years, are finding it hard to to reconnect with wider community and we pray also for those who are dealing with or in, or in in the last stages of life 
for those who, for that, that's their journey or for those who are surrounding them. Lord, may, as we read the 23rd Psalm, as we think of you with us in mm. all things, Lord, may we know you. For those that are walking that path of, of struggle, of, of grief, of bereavement, Lord, may you be very present. May we know you walking with us. May we know your gentle arms around us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, we pray for those who are undergoing uh, surgery or facing treatment for life-altering conditions. And Father, we just pray. We pray that they might know your hand upon them at this time. We, we hold them before your throne of grace. And we pray that, Father, would you look with favour and with grace upon them. Show them your mercy, Lord. Uh, may they know the presence of the life-giving spirit in their lives. For those that are known to us, Lord, we just bring their names before your throne of grace. For others, Lord, who have nobody to pray for them, we lift them up before you, Lord, and we pray for them this morning. Father, would you come and by your Holy Spirit, would you come into their lives and renew life and bring life. Bring light where there is only hopelessness and despair. Lord, we give thanks where there has been healing. Mm. Lord, we give thanks where you yes. are bringing respite, when you are bringing actually complete turns, complete about faces in people's illnesses and in their treatments. So, Lord, we pray for more of that. Yes, Lord. Lord uh, we give thanks for, for, for Sophie, for that, uh, for her now much recovered, having um, been struggling with, with a COVID infection. Lord, we thank you for that, and we pray for others that uh, that they may be held by you, restored by you. Mm. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now, I pray for Thomas and Lydia, whose wedding I'm doing later this morning, and just asking for. Lord, the, the outpouring of your presence in that, in that time when they come together. And then in the same way, Jesus, as you came to the wedding in Cain of Galilee to do your first miracle, and you transform that experience for that bride and groom, uh, Father, so too we pray that today uh, your presence would just transform this moment and this day for both Thomas and Lydia. I pray that that knowledge of Christ that they have would just make this day so much sweeter and more enjoyable. And Father, we, we pray that you would be honoured and glorified. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And with the Lord, diocese, we pray, Father, for the Saltway team. Sorry, were you going to pray for? Oh, no, we've got more people to pray for for weddings. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> opened opened a box there <laughs> uh, as as we come to this day yes uh we pray for lee and heather their weather, wedding their with the thing their wedding at webb heath lord we pray for them and at bailey with gail we pray for for paul and rachel for roy and lorraine lord as we enter into this season now of a new of, of weddings being more <laughs> A feature of our weekends lord we pray for all those couples that we will interact with particularly for the couples we've named today uh, mm. and lord we pray that as garth prayed that their wedding won't just be a great uh, event it will be a time when they're very very aware of your holy spirit mm. with them pouring down upon them focused on them in that moment mm. so lord may it be a transformational moment not just in terms of their lives together but a transformation in their spiritual lives too. Pray this in your precious name, Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 And with the diocese, Father, we pray for the mm. Saltway team, 
we pray for the wider community around them, in particular those businesses and families and individuals that we've been asked to pray for, those who have been hardest hit by the ongoing pandemic. We pray, Father, that the church might be able to minister into those situations, that they would be able to come alongside all the people uh, and, and be able to be that comforting presence, the, the, the guiding hand of the Lord yeah, within their community. We pray particularly for Nigel Bayard and Laura mm -hmm. Handy, their, their priests, and for uh, Philip Bowen, their, their reader. Lord, would you bless their ministry? As they seek your face, Lord, would you give to them your word? May they be, uh, be the kind of ministry and ministers and, and leaders, Lord, that you, want, that you have designed them to be, mm -hmm. to lead your people into growth, to lead your people into deeper things of the Lord. And so too, Lord, we pray for the Diocese of Kubwa in Nigeria with Duke Akim Misoko, the bishop. And we ask, Father, that your hand of blessing would be upon that diocese in a land which has known much persecution in recent years. But that, Lord, that the church might not be afraid, but be strong and of a good courage because you are with them and may they know your presence with them. As they go about being church, as they go about sharing the good news of Jesus Christ, Lord, may they see fruitfulness, may they see a rich harvest of souls. And we pray particularly for Bishop Duke, that Lord, he might, that he might, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, help renew the church and strengthen it and lead it into those green pastures that you have for it. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. So I'm going to pray that you will be with us in our worship tomorrow, that you, as we engage with the story of that week leading up to Good Friday, Easter Sunday, Lord, as we engage with all of that afresh this year, may we get a new impartation of, of, of wonder and awe at the majesty and the miracle of, of you with us. So, Lord, let us not just be simply going through the motions. Help us to be transformed once again. To be renewed in our faith in you. Lord, to pour out your spirit again upon us that we may know, know how much you love us. So, Lord, be with us in this week. In a very special way. Help us. Help for those of us that are busy in it, help us to, will you push through, into through the busyness, into, so that we can worship in spirit and truth as well. So be with us, Lord. Amen. Amen. So most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of his victory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so standing at the foot of the cross, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. 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 May Christ, who bore our sins on the cross, set us free to serve him with joy. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. <laughs> I, I was pondering uh, last week about that thing about because we've not done Easter normally for quite a while now. It's it's quite interesting having to try and get back into having a, a slightly more normal pattern. There's quite a lot <laughs> of inertia to get moving into it again. Absolutely. And I thought I was the only one feeling that way. But yes, no. <laughs> 
it's no. in other discussions with others it's it, it's like <laughs> it's not the car's been sat in the garage for too long and Ooh. it needs a bit of persuading to get going <laughs> Everything's not going, everything's a bit stiff. <laughs> so, yes. I'm also very conscious. I'm taking a wedding later and I need to sort my hair out. <laughs> oh Vain as I am. <laughs> oh. So, what time's the wedding you're taking? 12. Oh, I've mine's yeah. at one. Gail, bless her, has got two. Are you doing Lee and uh, Heather? Yes. Yeah. Yes, because you read their bands, didn't you? I did their bands, yeah. They're a lovely yeah. couple, they are. They are a lovely couple, yeah. yes. Is it at one yes. o'clock? Yeah. Oof. Yeah, so that's at one o'clock. Well, you don't get that many weddings. In the back. <clears throat> Sorry? I would have popped in if I wasn't doing my, mine at 12. But... No, you'd be a bit of a sprint, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, they are a lovely couple. And um, and, and and there's a family, uh, Heather in particular, very rooted in, in around, around St. Philip. So that's really, it's really lovely. Sure, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and Gail's got two, as I said. This is good. You all know what our diaries are doing now. <laughs> She's got one at 12 and then another one at two. There you go. Bless there her. You, are. Well, you will have a pretty church on a hill. Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens. Mind you, you're quite pretty. You're not you personally. Well, you. Okay. I've got into a hole now. <laughs> 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 I know what you mean. Your church. St. Peter's, yeah. <laughs> church, which you are part. <laughs> anyway, before I get myself into any more trouble, that's probably enough. Anyway, I do pray people have a really great Palm Sunday. And yes, uh, look, forward to, look forward to seeing people. I'm just having a moment when I have we got any palm crosses? Mm. <laughs> Hopefully somebody's bless more organized than me. Anyway, bless you. Um, have a really great Sunday and see you all soon. Well.